Do you see what's missing? Yeah, well, today we're gonna talk about options on what you can do if you can't find a graphics card for that new computer you just built. Stay tuned. So, I'm sure many of you are suffering from the same problem. You just built a system and you have no graphics card to put in it. And unfortunately, you're not alone. There's thousands of people that are suffering from exactly the same problem right now. Graphics cards simply are hard to come by right now. However, is that really true? I mean, are graphics cards really that hard to come by? I mean, today, you can buy a 3080 or 3090 you're just gonna pay three times MSRP. And honestly, that's not a great solution. And it's also a solution that I don't recommend doing. I did a video a while back where I go through the problem of why we're in a graphics card shortage right now. And I'll go ahead and tag that video right here. And the biggest complaint that I got from that video is that I didn't give any solutions to the issue. And honestly, the reason why I didn't give any solutions is because there really aren't very many good solutions. In fact, there are no good solutions to the problem. Aside from the tier systems and the lottery systems that some sellers are starting to implement that we really don't have any good solutions to this issue right now because the problem isn't really a graphics card shortage as much as it's a graphics card shortage at MSRP. I mean, you can buy these cards. Like I said before, you can go to eBay and pay three times MSRP and just embolden scalpers to go buy more cards in order to sell them on eBay. Or there's other things that people have been doing too. Like for instance, it's getting really popular nowadays to go and buy pre-built systems just for their graphics card. And honestly, that sounds extreme, but it's really not as extreme as it sounds, you know, because if you, if, if you have to pay three times MSRP on eBay in order to buy one of these cards, however, you can buy a pre-built for cheaper, then just buy the pre-built. You can sell off all the pieces for the system and keep the graphics card for yourself. That's actually a viable solution. You can also troll Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and see if you can find a used computer that has a 10 or 20 series card in it that you can use in your gaming system. A lot of those cards are still really viable for gaming nowadays. In fact, their prices have skyrocketed too lately. So if you find a used system, hopefully the price isn't too bad. What I'm going to go over today is I'm going to go over a little bit of an unorthodox solution to this problem. And this is a temporary solution. However, I think it's a pretty good solution that not a lot of people have talked about. And that is using an APU to play games. Now, if you built an AM4 based system, then you have the option to actually pick up a Ryzen APU and game on that. And that sounds really bad. I mean, we don't use APUs for gaming. We use those in grandma's system, right? However, APUs, especially AMD's Ryzen APUs, have actually gotten pretty good. And what I'm doing right now is I actually built this one intentionally as budget as possible. This one here is a Ryzen 3 2200G that has a Vega 8 in it. Honestly, if you're gonna do this, I highly recommend going with the Ryzen 5 with the Vega 11. However, I wanted to prove a point. I wanted to show that you could get absolutely the cheapest APU and you could still have a pretty decent time playing games on it. Now the standard that I'm making for this video is a game has to play at at least 30 frames a second because honestly below that it's just unplayable. And I was able to actually achieve that with all the games that I tried. And Kind of, and I'll go ahead and show you. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some of the older games and we're gonna work our way up to some more modern games and I'll show you how they worked out. So let's get started with some older games. All right, real quick before we get into gameplay, I just wanted to go over the system specs on this real quick. This system here, as I said before, I wanted to build it as ultra budget as possible just so I can prove the point that APUs actually can be viable options when it comes to gaming. So as before, this is a Ryzen 3 2200G and this is using the Vega 8 APU. And I also only gave it eight gigs of DDR4 on a B450 motherboard with a 512 gig SSD. All this in just a cheap case. This is kind of like the system that you'd buy for your grandma. And I wanna show how well you can actually play games on this. So without further ado, let's get to some gameplay. So the first game that we're gonna look at today is Left 4 Dead 2. 
This is a game that came out way back in 2009, and this one honestly really doesn't need a whole bunch of system resources, but this one should be a good test for older games and how they work on an APU. This game consistently ran at 60 frames a second. This is running in all defaults. I didn't change any of the settings. It's running at 1080p. The gameplay was extremely smooth, and I have honestly no complaints at all with how well it played. You should be able to play this game for hours without even realizing that you're on an APU. Unfortunately, that is if you can keep yourself alive. The next game we're looking at is a game that came out in 2011 called L.A. Noir, And I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but if you've played it, you know exactly what I mean. So let's take a look at how this one ran. L.A. Noir is a GTA-based game where it's an open world, so you can drive, you can walk around, you can fire guns. It's actually a really fun game if you've ever had a chance to play it. I highly recommend it. I still play it even today, even though it's a pretty old game. But with this one here running at completely stock settings, this one ran at about 30 frames a second. And I did, like I said, I didn't change anything on this one. This one's running at 1080p, and all the graphics settings are set to default. And it actually played really well. This is another example of one that's really playable on an APU. The next game we're going to look at today is GTA 5. Can you believe this game came out in 2013? Hopefully GTA 6 is right around the corner. The gameplay in GTA 5 was just fine. However, this is the first one that I actually had to play around with the graphics settings a little bit on. This is actually currently playing at 720p because honestly, with the APU, I just couldn't get it reliable at 1080. So at 720, it actually plays really well. Most of the graphics are turned up to high and it's getting really decent frame rates. It's well over 30 frames a second. It may dip down a little under here and there, but for the most part, it stays above 30 frames a second and runs really good. So as you can see, the older games actually seem to run pretty good. In fact, they were completely playable. And if you're into playing older games, then an APU is a great option for you. However, this has to perform with some newer games too, so let's see how it performs there. The next game we're going to look at is CSGO, and even though this game was released in 2012, I was kind of torn on whether or not to include it in older games or newer games because this one is constantly updated and the graphics actually look really well. And this one played really good on the APU. This one, I honestly can't complain on the frame rates. The frame rate stayed above 30 frames a second, and that's while running at 1080p. But you know, honestly, CSGO is based on the half-life Life 2 engine and it can pretty much run on any hardware so it's really hard to use this as a gauge however it looks really good and you can definitely spend hours playing this game even on an APU. The next game we're going to look at is BeamNG. This game here, honestly, I could not get it to run decently at 1080p. I had to bring it down to 720 in order to get it to play at all. And this is just barely, in fact, I don't. it's not even hitting 30 frames a second. It's just under 30 frames a second and just barely playable. And it, it still is playable. I mean, I was able to go through some pre-configured levels and it did play okay. However, this isn't the way the game was meant to be played. When I was playing this at 1080, I was lucky to get 10, 15 frames a second. It was completely unplayable. So this is a game here that honestly, if you bring it down to 720p, it actually will play on this APU. But this one is one that's really difficult to say that it works well. It works, but it doesn't work great. The 
The last game that we're going to look at today is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is the one that I had the most difficulty getting to run over 30 frames a second. It definitely will not run on default settings. I had to bring this one all the way down to 720p and I also had to turn the graphics settings all the way down to ultra low. But honestly, this is such a gorgeous game that even with the graphics settings set to this low of a setting, it still looked amazing. And the frames per second actually were over 30 frames a second it ran better than beam ng did and honestly it was very playable this video here is actually just going through one of the benchmarks so i can actually kind of see what the frames per second were however the quality on this game is just immaculate and the fact that it can be played at all on an apu is actually kind of impressive and then keep in mind that this right here is a ryzen 3 with a vega 8 apu so if you were to actually play this game on the vega 11 you should actually get better results than I'm getting with this one and based on what hardware that you're using you should all around be able to get better results with the APU than I'm doing like I said this system was built specifically to be ultra low end so it still looks pretty good and the FPS is pretty good for what the hardware is So as you can see, the new games didn't play anywhere near as good as the older games did. However, we were able to at least get them playable. And you know, that's saying a lot, especially for a Vega 8. I highly recommend if you're gonna do this, I would pick up the Ryzen 5 that comes with the Vega 11. It would have been a much better test. However, I wanted to prove a point using the cheapest processor I could possibly get. And I think that point was proven. You actually can play games on an APU. It's a lot better than it used to be, and especially if you're using an AMD socket. If you're using the AM4 socket and you already have a system built, rather than letting it just sit there and collect dust, you might as well pull your processor out, pick yourself up a cheap APU, and at least enjoy your system for a little while until graphics cards come back into stock. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, then please hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I do a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.